I, I used the term BD at work with a young girl and she almost tried to slice my throat because she was like, what is that? What does BD mean? What does that mean? Girl, it means the hair is shaped like a bead. BD. Well, hello there, love bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment respectfully. And if you are not already a part of this book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's move on to our next book. I decided to move forward in time to the 90s. This is I Regret the Day I Lost My Virginity. You Are Not Your Past. By SWV's Leanne Lily Lyons. I grew up in the hybrid section of the Boogie Down Bronx. We had a lot of fun growing up as kids, not a worry in the world. We didn't have much of anything, but love was always something that my mother gave us for free. She always stressed the importance of love, especially when it came to my siblings and me. Growing up with all girls, my sisters, and I would always make the best out of what we had. Although I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth, I still ate my food with one. The Boogie Down Bronx, as the locals would call it, most people visiting would probably think of the Yankees and the birthplace of hip hop. Although this is true, most of us who lived there knew something a little different. For me, it meant something extraordinary. When I looked out my window, I heard people talking loud, playing spades in front of the building, local dope boys making a quick sale, and drug addicts looking like if they took one more hit, that would be the end. I also saw a fight or two, people arguing over some dumb shit, cigarette butts being flicked on the floor, and just locals trying to make the best out of this thing called life. Oh, let's not forget the rats that were so huge. Instead of taking the trash downstairs, you just throw the shit out the window. Those rats would literally take over the garbage cans downstairs, and no one wanted to invade their space. Oh, hell no, not a rat from NYC, Pauls. What you don't want to do is fuck with them New York City rats. <laughs> now, I ain't never experienced a New York City rat, but I seen them videos of New York City rats and I don't want no parts of them. And, and it's all because they keep messing with the land. Leave the damn land alone. Y'all keep building shit. The rats is doing just fine underground. Leave them ninjas alone. Y'all keep disturbing their homes. So they gotta come up out of the sewer to fuck with you. Stop building shit and they will stay underground. Do you understand that? That's the only reason why they surface. They come up, get their food or do whatever they they do and then go back down why what is that why is dc in uh new york always what is that about like bowser merle bowser is in trouble right now for all them rats in dc it's going to take for them rats to get together and jump one of them kids around there on the playground and then merle bowser do something or one of them white folks to get bit by a rat because god forbid a white folk get bit by a rat yeah, then they'll put some shit in place. Okay, they'll do more than them random black boxes. I don't know what the hell them random black boxes do anyway. What do they do? They catch one? 
And it's millions and trillions of rats? I also had a lot of fun riding bikes and riding my friend's big wheels. On to Jesus, I never knew why I didn't have a big wheel. Maybe my mama thought that that was too boyish for me because, you know, I've always been like a dainty little girl. I did have a sit and spin. Why in the earth did they allow us to sit on that shit? If you don't know what a big wheel is on God, it's three. It's like a tricycle close to the ground where you pedal around. It's made of plastic. This shit has only lasted about three months until you fucked it up or it broke apart. I don't know. Them big wheels and them sitting spans, they don't make that shit no more because it's dangerous. For the girly girls, double dutch, hopscotch, straight rope, and checking out the local boys was some of the fun stuff to do. Then she goes on to talk about um, how every Sunday or Saturday, because if you were one of them kids that were a church going kid, you would have to get your hair pressed for church on Sundays. And if you didn't sweat it out on Sunday, you would be able to wear those same curls from Sunday to school on Monday. And that was a big thing for little girls to have their hair pressed. Getting my hair pressed, my mother never burnt me. I don't know how, but anyway, she mentioned that Dax Grease. To this day, I still use that Dax Grease. By the fact, I use that Kinecolon. Anyway, that shit smelled like talk. But you couldn't tell me it wasn't growing my hair soft, supple, and beautiful. The magic of Dax. Mm -mm -mm. That's why all us black girls had long, beautiful hair. It was because of the Dax. And if you didn't have long, beautiful, lustrous hair, it was because you was an old bald head chicken. And it wasn't shit your mammy could do to grow your hair. It was probably some kind of genetics inside of you that wouldn't allow your hair to grow past a beady bead. But I don't want no trouble with you bitches because I can't use the term beady bead. I, I use the term beady at work at a young, with a young girl and she almost tried to slice my throat because she was like, what is that? What does beady mean? What does that mean? Girl, it means the hair is shaped like a bead. BD. Not her pressed for church on Sundays was definitely, or pictures, or you know, an event was definitely a special thing for us young black girls. I don't even know if little girls now get their hair pressed. I, I don't know, you know, because natural is such a big thing for today's society that maybe it would be frowned upon if you sat your child down and pressed her hair. One thing I did love about school was auditorium time. When we would put on shows and watch movies, my favorite film in elementary school was The Red Balloon. It was a movie about a young boy who couldn't live without his red balloons, which turned into a hot air balloon whenever he would dream about something or some place he wanted to go. It was like magic. And every time he'd fulfill one of his dreams, one of his balloons would pop when he came back to reality. I wanted to borrow his balloon so bad. While all the other kids were talking, I meshed into this movie as a young girl. I guess it's safe to say I was a dreamer, even at five and six years old. And that's why you're an artist also, Miss Leetley. Only special people get to have and believe in those dreams. As far as I can remember, I always wanted to be good at something. Not quite an overachiever, but just wanted to be acknowledged for something good that I've done. As a little girl, I remember being in elementary school, craving attention from my teachers. I wanted to be the one that was called on to be the class monitor. The class monitor was chosen to do every damn thing the line leader, paper assignment handler, etc. He, she wasn't just any student. He, she was an exceptional student. You had to really be on top of your game to be considered for that particular assignment. My favorite was being able to privately eat lunch in the classroom with the teacher at lunchtime. I don't know about that, Lily. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. 
because things happen when you be alone with adults sometimes, you know. And I know you're like, Nay, Nay, why you think it's so negatively? Because shit be happening, all right? It's those of us who know how shit can happen, and it's those of us who ain't never experienced the shiz happening. When I reached the fourth grade, there were two Spanish girls in my class who could do no wrong in any teacher's eyes, Kathy and Carlina. Kathy was a tall model hype girl who wore glasses and her hair in a thick ponytail braid, Paul. So I grew up in DC, all right, as we talk about frequently. I grew up in DC and DC was Chocolate City. If we had any Latinas or Latinos there, the mud hunchies were sparse. So there was no competition for the boys for uh, those exotic looking girls now, yes. Like all the young dudes from back in the day, oh, they didn't have no choices. The only choice they had was us. Nigga, either you take us or you go away. So they would pick like the, the prettiest or the most achieved black girl. We didn't have to worry about no uh, Latina girl coming around, around and stealing our boyfriend because it was just us. Like I said, this new DC, that's a totally different story. Girl, you better get on your game because the, the dude that you like, Leroy, like Maria, you need to get on your freaking glad yeah. that having that competition between us and the exotics never was a problem for us growing up. It was only us because I'm from DC, the chocolate city. Lily is going to talk about how being brought up in New York City where there is just as many Latinos as there are blacks. And them ninjas out there had options. And you know how some men are. They choose the option that's not us because they like that long, pretty hair. Not that we can't grow that long, pretty hair, but it's not us, so it's different. I'm glad I didn't grow up in that, girl, because I wouldn't stand a chance against all them Latinas. Kathy was a tall, model height girl who wore glasses and her hair in a thick ponytail braid. Unlike Kathy, Carlina was a short girl with the prettiest, thickest, short, curly hair who also wore glasses. I don't know, but there is something special about people who wear glasses. The awesome two, as I called them, were who you would consider the model students in our school. They were respectful, very well versed, and never got in any kind of trouble. I think they were the first ones at school all the time and the last ones to leave. They studied, 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 and volunteered as much as they could, all while maintaining an A average. Shit, I wanted to be part of that life. Child, me too, but I mean, I can only reach for what I could reach for. You know, I, I was a BC student. I was never that A. There was no one in school they could compete with but each other. I was trying to figure out how I would be friends with the teacher's pets, Kathy and Carlina. I figured the only way I could get people to notice me was to do something that everybody couldn't do, sing. I tried out for one of the history plays and was picked to sing Old Danny Boy and the Autumn Leaves in the Assembly. Not only was I excited, but my plan actually worked. The awesome two began conversing with me, which is when I quickly noticed how most of their conversation was about school and books. At this point, that was cool with me because I had two new friends, not just any two friends. I was friends with the smartest kids in school. I appreciate her honesty, but Lily girl, you will use a girl. I see you girl. I ain't mad at you because I've done it myself. I always wanted to stand next to the person that I wasn't. Standing next to the person who you wasn't or wanted to be. Uh, maybe some of that magic could rub off on you. I done got in trouble a couple of times for that. But I see you, girl. Okay? I see you. I have to be honest. After getting to know them, I was so much more focused on the right things. It was then they recognized another one of my gifts, 
which attracted them to me even more. My penmanship and my ability to write well sealed the deal for me. Everything was smooth sailing after that. Do y'all know what penmanship is? I know I do. That's writing. That actually used to be a class. These children don't even have signatures. You don't have a signature? How do you distinguish yourself from the rest of the other millions of children's gen, uh, what is Zesus? Gen Zesus or the alphas or whatever the hell they are. How do you distinguish yourself? What, what do you do to say this is actually my signature? They don't have, they don't teach you how to cursive. Cursive. How do you don't even cursive? Diana Sands, junior high school. That is where I met my first real love, Robert, a.k.a. Top Sport. Robert was one of the cutest guys in the school, and he could dance his ass off. He had height, looks, and moves. I thought he would be the guy that I would marry one day. Shit. Child, shit. I made a left on MLK. Oh, what a beautiful day, what a beautiful day. Taking a ride on the south side. Made a left on MLK. Hey,